Good morning. Welcome to a rainy overcast Thursday morning of Chem 1105 with your host, me, Dr. White. Hi. All right. Today, as soon as we're done with the lab by about 9.45 or 10 o'clock, maybe even a little earlier, I will be sending out an email with the password for your version of test number two that you will take. You will take the test, uh, hopefully you've downloaded, if not downloaded from the assignment area Blackboard, you'll take it and then take your answers and upload it as a single PDF file to the assignment area of Blackboard by uh, 1130. If you have, hold on, I've got dirty glasses. Oh no, that's not gonna work. Oh, not that I get any kickbacks from it, but they sell these microfiber towels at Walmart, I think three or four for a couple of dollars. It's very inexpensive. And they make as good, if not better than lens cleaners than the kind you get from your optometrist. I've been using it for years and they work great. Now I can see. All right, I'll be uploading the, uh, sending you the mail, uh, password. You'll upload your answers by 1130. There's one exception. If any students have sent me a letter from the Center of Access and Accountability, similar to test one, you have extra time. Uh, nothing like blueberry tea in the morning. All right, so that's what we'll be doing today. I should remind you, first of all, the password to make it, how should I say, less problems for you and me is all lowercase. The password always will be lowercase, all the, uh, whatever you enter for the password. There are numbers and letters, but all the letters will always be lowercase. And I will be checking my email this morning to see if anybody has uh, periodically about every 20 minutes, if you have a question, email me. And um, I guess that's about it for test number two, other than one other piece, two pieces of advice. One, be sure to look at the last page or two for important information that will help you during test number two. The other more important thing is be sure to show your work. If you write an answer and nothing else and you get it wrong, you'll get zero points. That's a big zero. If you show your work and you make an ant math error, which I've already done this semester, you punch some numbers in wrong, but you have it set up like I show you correctly. If it's a 10 point problem, I only take off one point. So do you want to get zero points or nine points? Show your work. And finally, let me remind you, underneath your name, it will say two things now. One, please use proper significant figures for all calculated answers. And now also say, please use three significant figures for all atomic masses. And please do. If you don't, and you get the wrong answer, and just because you didn't use three significant figures, I'll take off a point. If you lose a couple of points, that's not good. I don't want to do it, but I will, because you have instructions how to do it properly. Please follow the instructions. And before I go on, are there any questions about test number two? All right, and a final note about test number two, due to some personal things I have to attend to tomorrow, I guarantee by 8 p.m. Sunday, I will have, or earlier, I'm shooting for earlier, but because of stuff I have to attend to tomorrow that I won't have time to grade test number two tomorrow, I will guarantee by 8 p.m. Sunday, if I got to stay up most of Saturday night finishing up, I'm, I hope I don't. But anyways, by 8 p.m., I'll have test number two score, your score in Blackboard, 
And by that time, I'll also send out a personal email to each and every one of you with your individual points for each answer you put on test number two. On Monday, I will go through all the answers on test number two. And remember, I'm gonna cut it out. How do you like my scissors? Wait, oh, they're safety scissors. Oh, it's bad humor. See, I didn't cut myself with my, Never mind. It's totally worthless, awful humor Thursday. I apologize. Not really. But anyways, uh, I lost my train of thought. But uh, oh, on Monday, I will go through all the answers on test number two. But I will cut that out of the video. Watch out, safety scissors. <laughs> all right. Let's go right to the lab. But before we do that, I'm going to have to teach you something. This whole semester, I've had it timed really close. And in the summer, it's challenging talking about concepts in the lecture before we have the lab. Today's lab, well, I'm off by about an hour and a half lecture time, maybe a little less. So what I'm going to do is jump forward for a little while in material from the chapter on solutions, chapter five, part two, that won't be on test two, but it will be on test three, and also something you need to know for today's lab. So let's get to it. All right, thumbs up people. Do you see how do chemists quantitatively describe solutions on your screen? Thank you. All right, let's consider the following. What if I were to send a couple of you into the lab and say, make up a solution of sugar and water? Or I could have said, make up a solution of salt and water. Remember, a solution is a mixture of two compounds where neither one reacts, they contain their, uh, retain their chemical identity. And I'm sure you've all mixed salt and water or sugar and water together. Well, I hope you have. Anyways, would you, the three students, I would they come back with the same solution? And the answer would be no because each one would put probably a different amount of salt with a different amount of water. And they would be different solutions, even though the contents is the same, the amount of each component is different. So how do we, we being chemists, quantitatively, ooh, that's a fancy word, that means figure out how much, describe solutions. So I could tell the student, hey, make this solution. And all the students, if they knew what I was talking about, and hopefully you do, would be able to go in the lab and make the identical solution. Well, we use what's called concentration. And what I'm talking about is concentration. Now, there are three different types of concentration. Percent concentration by percent, percent by volume, and molarity. Later next week, I'll come back to these first two, but the one in red, by the way, can anybody guess what my favorite color is? Yep, red, oh look, that's not my birthstone. Yep, you're right, red. Well, guess what, when something's important, I put it in, Red. And today I'm going to talk about molarity. And molarity is a way of determining the concentration of, and everybody got it right, it is red. And every car I've ever owned has been a certain type of red. And whenever I've gotten a new car, my friends and family say, you're not going to get another red car. And I look at them and say, of course I am. It's my favorite color. And I do. But anyways, what is molarity? Molarity is a way of describing what we call concentration. 
how much of a solute is in a solution. Remember, a solution has solvent, the uh, chemical that's uh, present in a solution, the greatest amount, and all other chemicals are called solutes. So what is this molarity? And let me pass this. And molarity, which is abbreviated or shown by a capital M, is a ratio giving the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. There's another one called molality, which I won't teach in this class, but I do know. And this is very important. I don't know why this dot got here. Let me get rid of it. There we go. All right, so molarity is very important. It's a key aspect of chemistry. And molarity is defined as moles of solute per one liter of solution. It's not one liter of solvent, it's one liter of solution. Now, this is very important in my mind. And also, you should know this. By the way, this will be given to you test number uh, three important information, but you should know how to use this. Now, by definition, molarity is moles of solute per one liter of solution. But in the lab, we don't measure liters. It's easier to measure milliliters, ml. And remember, one liter equals a thousand milliliters. And therefore, if molarity is moles per liter, it's also moles per thousand milliliters because of this. And this is the one we will use. And I don't know where all these dots came. Oh, no, I've been affected by the dot virus. <laughs> I don't know if there's one. All right, now let's do a little practice because there's some things you need to know. And this is both for the lab and for test number three. Thumbs up, people. Do you see what I just wrote on my whiteboard? Actually, it's my word perfect document. Uh oh, let me check. All right, thank you. I've got the I'm slow to get my thumb up group this morning. All right, now, molarity is abbreviated by the letter capital M. And how do we show the molarity of a solution using capital M? You will see on bottles in the stock room at COD, bottles of liquids. And on the label, it will say something like this. And what does this mean? Oh, I promise I wouldn't print or write. Well, first of all, the letter capital M, that tells you molarity. And what does that mean? Once I know it's molarity, molarity, you know, is moles of solute per 1,000 milliliters. And therefore, what does this mean? 
it means 1.25 moles of NaCl per 1,000 milliliters. Again, capital M tells you molarity. Molarity is moles of solute. In this case, the solute is always listed after the capital M, NaCl, sodium chloride, table salt. Remember, if you go out to dinner, lunch, or breakfast with chemists like myself, one of us will always ask, can you please pass the NACL? NaCl, NACL, never mind. But I've done that too many times. So let's try this again. That's a better age. I'll do this one. What does this mean? Capital one sec. That's interesting. My caller ID doesn't even show up. Well, my voicemail or they'll give up. I guess they gave up. All right, sorry about that. What does this mean? Capital M tells you molarity. And what is molarity? It's moles of solute per 1,000 milliliters. What's the solute? HCl. So what does this mean? It means 2.75 moles of HCl, and molarity is per 1,000 milliliters of solution. And that's how you do it. I'm going to let you try one so you can have some fun too. What does this mean? Your turn. And give me a thumbs up when you're done. Or wait a second. This is I don't like using thumbs up group today. So I better do the following. All right, I think everybody wants to vote, has voted, but I'll give you another 15 seconds. Go. Five, four, three, two, one, and time's up. Whenever you see capital M, that's molarity. And that's equal to moles, solute per 1,000 milliliters of solution. And we don't write the word solution down there because chemists, especially organic chemists, are lazy. So what does this mean? Capital M, molarity, 6.88. And therefore, here's our solute right after the chemical, uh, the capital M, moles, H2SO4, you'll learn later on that sulfuric acid, per 1,000 milliliters.
Oh, let's do it again. What does this mean? And the answer is yes, I have the quickest mouse wheel. All right, does that help? That's the one disadvantage of being on Zoom versus a classroom. In a classroom, I'll be covering the whole whiteboard and then I erase it. <clears throat> so you have time to write it down. All right, what does this mean? Capital M, molarity. Afterward is the solute, and molarity is moles of solute per 1,000 milliliters. So I have 7.89 times 10 to the third moles. And what's my solute, KBR, potassium bromide, per 1,000 milliliters of solution. Now, one thing I do, I'll go over this again on Monday, but there are different types of solution. And one type of solution is called an aqueous solution. And I spelled that wrong, probably. I always spell aqueous. Hold on for a timeout for some help from Google. Yep, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Dr. White was always the first one down in the spelling bee and probably still will be. Whoa, I didn't know I could move that. I don't want you there. Nope, don't want that. No, I'll just use that. Yeah. All right. And you should know this. What is an aqueous solution? An aqueous solution is a solution where the solvent, the component present in the greatest amount, is water. And how do we show that? By this. Bracket, small a, small q, close bracket. And this means we have an aqueous solution. So now let's continue with molarity. And what does this mean? What letter am I at? Ah, D. Ah, thank you for letting me know. I forgot to ask my thumbs up, people. All right. Well, you won't see where I wrote it wrong. I did that on purpose so you couldn't see I was making a mistake with aqueous. All right, instant replay, everybody. Let me wind back to tape. Nor, nor, rep, nor, rep, rep. All right, let's talk about 
a special type of solution, aqueous solution. See how quickly I cover my boo-boo, my mistake? I haven't used that word in ages, boo-boo. Oh, I just made a boo-boo. But anyways, aqueous solution. What's an aqueous solution? It's a solution where the solvent is water. Hopefully all know H2O is water by now. And how do we show that? We show that by bracket, the letters AQ, smaller case, close bracket. And as soon as you see, see that, you know the water is the solvent. So for this, let's change this. What does this mean? Two days later, I'll finish. There we go. What does this mean? And what is the solvent of the solution? And as soon as you keep see capital M, that's molarity. And what does that mean? It's 7.11 moles. And NaOH is called sodium hydroxide. I'll teach you about that. I think the next chapter. And for 1,000 milliliters, that hasn't changed. And the solvent is water. And that's how you do it. And let me have you try one. And the same question, what does that mean? And what is the solvent of that solution? Your turn. I think everybody's done, so let's do this. And capital M, molarity. And that means I have 0 0.115 moles. And here's my solute, calcium chloride, for 1,000 milliliters of solution. And what is my solvent? This a bracket AQ, close bracket, which is shorthand for aqueous. I think a lot of you are familiar with in various languages, mother tongues, aqua means water, even though in the United States, our English is sort of based from German and in German that's Wasser. But anyways, this tells you the solvent is water. Now, I'll be going through in the lecture on Monday, 
how do you make various molarity solutions? But in the lab today, you'll be weighing out, you'll be making it yourself, but not the way I'll teach in the lab, but still it's pretty realistic. It is realistic actually, but and I'll be showing you some calculations how to determine the molarity of the solution. Now, in real life, you do this in what's called a graduate in a volumetric class. And I'm going to be showing you that. All right. Ooh, I haven't used this all day. <laughs> it's time for lab. And today's lab deals with molarity. And you know now molarity is a measure of concentration chemists use to determine and also to make certain types of solutions. And when you put salt in water to make a salt solution to get the same one over and over again, or if two different people make it, they make the same one if that's what they're trying to do, we use a specific type of measurement for concentration, how much solute in a solution called molarity. And I just went through molarity as moles per liter. And today's lab, I hate to ask this, but any thumbs up people see molarity lab? This is my, I don't want to raise my thumb. Thank you, Ashley. All right. Today's lab deals with molarity and we'll be doing this in Beyond Lab Z. One thing I should mention, each lab we do Beyond Lab Z lab in, I will include the PDF file that Beyond Lab Z actually provides. I use some of it, like how to do it, but not their questions. You never have to look at that unless you want to, in case you decide I want to. So if we look at the lab, molarity is an important concept. It's defined as moles of solute. Notice here I did a thousand milliliters right off the bat. And it's written as X capital M compound. So if you have 9.45 capital M, M NACL bracket AQ close bracket solution, then you have 9.45 moles of sodium per liter. And I really should have put here per thousand milliliters. of solution and the AQ in the brackets indicates the solvent of the solution in the water. In this lab, you will be making solutions with two different solutes. It'll be fun, it's quick too, uh, the Beyond Lab Z part, and you will be calculating the molarity of each solution. Normally, this is done in what's called a volumetric class. All right, thumbs up people. Do you see a bunch of glassware on your screen right now? Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. All right, these are volumetric fast and the tiny ones are so cute. This one, I can't raise it. I have a, a couple five milliliter on my coffee table in my living room with other things. I'll take a picture and show you that. They're so cute. Now you know I'm a chemist. Now, if you look at, say, this one that says 100, you'll see a brown line up this net. And when you fill, put your solute in there, the solid, then you fill it with the solvent, say water, you bring the water exactly up to that line where the meniscus, the bottom of a U, is touching that line. And these, uh, 
volumetric flasks are very accurate, much more accurate than using a graduated cylinder. If you look at the bottom, it says these are accurate, this one plus or minus 0 0.1 milliliters. That means you can get for significant figure accuracy with these. These are accurate to use. And then once you put the water in, if that's your solvent, you put the stopper, that's this plastic thing on top, on there and you shake it up back and forth and that will make your solution. And they come in all sizes, 500 and this big one all the way to the left is probably a thousand or is that a 500? I've seen a, a two and three liter, uh, four liter. I've never used them. I've seen pictures of them. But the ones you see in the picture here are standard. However, in today's lab, and here I have plus or minus 3.3%. Uh, 3 Actually, that's wrong. You don't want in the picture. 0.1%. They're quite accurate. However, Beyond Lab Z doesn't use a volumetric. I've complained to them about it. And you'll be using a graduated cylinder. Now, key formulas moles of solute equals grams of solute times one mole of the solute divided by the molecular weight. You've done that. And that equals the moles of solute. Now, the molarity, now normally you do a thousand milliliters, that's the easiest way. But for this lab, they have you do it in a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. So being the nice person I have, I'm showing you how to convert it into moles per thousand milliliters. Once you calculate the moles of the solute using formula one, you will have to calculate the molarity, moles per liter, of the solute of the solution using formula two, moles of solute times a thousand divided by the milliliters you actually use, which in this lab will be 50. And let's make it simple, because I could have put down 50.0. Do all your calculations to three significant figures. And here's the procedure. And let me open up beyond lab Z. All right, I'll ask my super fast thumbs up person who I think I know. Do you see chemistry, organic chemistry, biology on your screen? Thank you. Oh, I've got two super fast and other. Thank you very much. Now, for the chemistry, make sure it's in higher ed. This is highlighted. Click on open. Now, I'm going to take you back to the lab. You'll click on the virtual chem lab. We did this. Then this is a little different. And this makes your life and mine real easy. In the worksheets area in the lower left, select the reactions and stoichiometry. And then you'll select creating solutions of a known molarity, first with ammonium chloride, and later you'll do it with, and step 14, same thing. You'll do step three again, but you'll use create a solution of no molarity with baking powder, which is sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3. Let me show you how to do that. Does everybody see on their screen right now, welcome to virtual chem lab. At the top, it says titrations, calorimetry, inorganic, et cetera. 
Now, watch closely. On the left, where it says worksheets, click on reactions and stoichiometry. Left mouse click. Then, if I use this bar to move it down, you see how you have I'm highlighting, create a solution of known molarity. Everybody see that? Thumbs up, people. Thank you. Now, there are two of them. Do you notice when I highlight the SAP one, in the center of the screen, it says, weigh a sample of ammonium chloride and create a known solution, of, a solution of known molarity. You'll do that one. After you do that one, you'll exit and come back here and then do the second one, highlight, see where it says, weigh a sample of baking soda, or I should say baking powder, but they say baking soda. And I can see why, I know why, and create a solution of no molarity. So if we're gonna do the ammonium chloride first, I'm gonna click on the top, creating a solution of no molarity. Left click with your mouse, and now I'll be opening up the lab. Does everybody see the lab where it says drawer beakers and pipettes on your screen? Thank you. The first thing you have to do is get a beaker. So you click on, click on beaker. I've got the sound on because I think it's cool. <laughs> Noisy drawer. And you'll take a beaker and put it back by this brown jar. And the next thing I'm going to do is close the drawer so you don't get injured and walk into it. You don't have to, but I do. Next, if you notice the balance, the yellow thing on the left, when I put my cursor in, it becomes a hand and says balance. Click on that. Notice now we have our balance. And here, this brown jar says ammonium chloride. The first thing I'm going to do is this square, this is called weighing paper. You never weigh anything directly on a balance. Now, you could do it that way, or you could use the beaker directly. I like doing it this way for a solid. Now, you have to take the cap off. See, when I put my cursor on top, it says remove lid. And this is in the instructions of the lab. Oh, and you can also come back and watch this video. I click that. Oh, it's open. Now, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Notice that the lower right, there's a spatula, or they call it scoop. And these are really spatulas or scoopulas, they're also called. And you could pick it up and take some out of here. But beyond Lab Z made your life easy. If you look on the label, you see the scoop, as they call it, I call it spatula, with different amounts, because there's larger ones. Click on the bottom one, watch. Is that neat? And then hold your mouse button down and drag the spatula. But before you do that, I'm gonna let go. Make sure after you put the filter paper on there, you click the button tear. Tear means zero. And it's zero. Now I'll click on the bottom and I'll drag this over. Sometimes this, see where it clicked in place? And now I dumped it in there. This is the way you need to record. Record all the numbers. Now that you've recorded the numbers of the weight of the in this case, ammonium chloride, you'll take the filter paper and you'll put it over the beaker. Yay! And now where it says zoom out, I will. Now, over here in underneath the exit sign, we have different graduated cylinders. And the one all the way on the left when I hold it over my cursor, it says 50 milliliter empty. That's the one we're going to use. Take the beaker. Whoop. 
got to get over to write one. And hold it over there and I'll let go of the mouse button. <laughs> if you heard that, there was liquid, which it shouldn't be because it's a solid, but it's funny. And now we're going to pull the mouse over the beak, over the graduated cylinder, see how it became a hand. And before I pick it up, over here are two taps, water taps at the sink. Notice the first one, you see a little green tab. And if you look closely on the other side, there's another knob. This is what I call city water. This is standard water like you have in your bathroom. But the curved tab has only one handle. And this is deionized water. Ions that are in water, and I'll teach you more about it. We've talked a little about it. I'll talk more about it later in the semester. Not too much later, because we're already in week five. Next week will be week six. Whoa, where does summer go? But that has deionized water. And what you'll do is take this. And when it pops back, it's full. And you're done. And that's the first part of the lab. I'm going to click on exit. And the second part, you'll do the same thing, except now, and let me make sure you can see it. You'll click the second creating of a solution of no molarity. And if you look over here, it says baking soda. And you'll click on that. And I'll take you to the same lab. You'll take the beaker and put it over here. You'll weigh it out. And I'm going to zoom in just real quick for a second. If I hold my cursor over, oh, excuse me, uh, over the bottle, it says baking soda. And you'll do the same thing I just did, where you'll weigh it, put it in the beaker, put it in the graduate, put water in, and zoom out. And that's what I have here in the instructions. I don't think I have take the cap off, but I showed you in the video. All right. For the ammonium chloride, you would have gotten the weight of the sample. The volume here, and I'm going to help you out would be 50. And uh, Disha, yes, it will always be 50. Let me even prove it to you. Oh, let's call it 50.0 milliliters. This you'll get from the lab. This you'll calculate from Formula, hold on, let's do this real. Formula one. Same thing here. And the molarity, you'll use formula number two. Same thing there, formula number two. And that's today's lab. Other than, oh no, Dr. White has some questions and you have to answer them. And this is due next Tuesday. And notice some of the things I'm going to ask you to recalculate for different things using formula one and two. The grams you convert into moles and then use formula two with this amount of milliliters. And oh, look, you should know how to do these already. And I've timed it pretty good. Remember, today we're going to have lab. In a couple minutes, I'm going to sign off and email you the test number two password for your version.
half the class will do one version, half the class will do other. And when we're face to face, I do two different versions when I pass it out in the class. But anyways, is there any questions on the lab today? Any questions about upcoming test number two today? Remember, you can either turn your mic on or you can ask via the chat. And you can do everyone or directly to Dr. White. Well, with that, I'm time-wise, we've done pretty good. You've learned about molarity that you can use to do the lab. And you can see it's a pretty quick lab in terms of what you do in lab Z. And it's fun too, at least I think, but I'm a chemist, I'm biased. And with that, I'm going to say, gang gesund, be healthy, have a nice rest of the day and weekend. I'm going to be sending out the password in a couple of minutes and take test number two and have it emailed or uh, not email, have it uploaded as a PDF file to Blackboard by 1130, unless you have sent me a letter from the Center of Access and Accountability, and then you'll have the same extra time as I sent those people in test number one that I sent you an email then. With that, no questions, I'm done. I better get to work and send out the email. Gain gesund, I will see you on uh, Monday. And Lily, thank you. Bye now, gang is on.